We've done a lot of going to EVE on this channel. EVE is an endless font of engineering challenges, and we'll never run out of things to do there, but most of the missions I've done there have not been particularly practical. The goal of this mission is to prove the concept of a reusable EVE passenger system and bring Kerbals in vague passenger module luxury from orbit of EVE to the surface and then back to orbit again. This EVE plane has 80 Kerbals mounted in the MK3 passenger modules. I have mounted them externally. It would have been possible to put them in a fairing and eliminate the surface drag from these parts, which is very significant but I wanted to make sure that they could see out the windows and considered this as part of the challenge in the mission. The plane has two modes of propulsion. We have ducted fans for low atmospheric flight and then rockets to get us the rest of the way to orbit. More on that later because this is only one part of the reusable system I'm gonna be using here. So let's look at the other parts of it and why we need them. As we've seen in past missions, it is possible to fly a plane all the way from EVE back to Kerbin on a single stage. But we want to be able to have usable cargo room in this plane. So to do that, we're going to be bringing fuel to it in low EVE orbit. So the first support module in this system is a fuel tanker that's going to bring fuel from Gilly to low EVE orbit in order to refuel our plane. The fuel tanker is a very uncomplicated craft. It's just a big rocket fuel tank with some liquid fuel tanks and some LVNs attached to it to get it to where it needs to go. The second thing we need is a source for this fuel. So I've made a mining rover that will mine ore out of Gilly and turn it into the liquid fuel and oxidizer we need. And the last part of the support system is a high powered rocket tug. This is fairly similar to the fuel tanker in that it's just some fuel tanks with an engine attached, but it's a lot smaller and has a lot more power. It'll be more fun to see how this fits in, so we'll get to that later. This last part isn't really part of the system, but it all needs to get to space somehow, and this will get the job done. I've put together everything except for the plane into the first launch. The design of the booster stage, in addition to giving it a sci-fi look, also allows us to use the engine on the space tug to get to orbit. With so much of a focus on planes on this channel, it's nice to every once in a while be able to do a old-fashioned gravity turn launch from Kerbin. For the last part of the launch into orbit, I've mounted the fuel tanker in reverse so that once we reach space, we can break off the fairing, turn a 180, and then use the LVN engines to get the rest of the way into a low carbon orbit. This is incidentally why I put my low carbon orbit a little bit higher than the just over 70 kilometers that we normally aim for. This gave me some extra time to break the fairing off after reaching space and then use the LVN engines. Once in low Kerbin orbit, some of the modules have to be moved around a bit to get it ready to go to Gilly. And then we're going to land the booster stage for this, which was made in reusable fashion. We've skipped parachutes and any of that boring stuff for this and are going to go for the SpaceX style retro burn landing. And it's here where I have to disappoint you all a little bit. I wanted to land this on top of the VAB, as is tradition around here, but unfortunately found that for whatever reason, this booster stage liked to shake itself apart to death if you landed it on solid ground. So instead, we're going to aim for the water as close to the Kerbal Space Center as possible. The next parts of the mission, getting the support modules to Gilly and getting them mining and getting the fuel to low EVE orbit is not really the most interesting part of this. So I'm going to just show it very briefly and then we're going to get to the real business of this mission, which is getting the plane to EVE. So next up, in order to call this an EVE plane, we need to be able to actually get it to EVE. This would be a good chance to see the two modes of propulsion we're going to be using. The first one is an internally mounted ducted fan, which is going to get us up to speed and get us to a reasonable altitude on Kerbin. Although due to the thinner atmosphere on Kerbin, it's not that great at flying here and we're not going to be able to get it that high on Kerbin. Near the middle of the plane, you'll notice two utility bay doors that can either be opened or closed. The first of the utility bays contains the ducted fans that we're using for propulsion in low atmosphere. We need that to be open to use them for propulsion, 
but we want that to be closed when we start using the rocket engines because at that point it's just going to be generating drag. The second of the utility bay contains some additional wings that we can use to create more lift when we need it and then close it when we don't need it to get a more efficient lift to drag ratio. I was a little bit torn on the idea of using this because I felt like it kind of went against the philosophy of the no clipping design I was going for here. But the idea of being able to adjust the amount of wing area that we had on a single stage design in KSP was interesting enough. I, I liked the idea that it's kind of like having flaps on an actual plane and it was a lot of fun to experiment around with so I left it in. So I'm going to call these the flaps and when we get to the Eve Ascent I'll be talking about when I'm using them and why. It's a lot easier to escape Kerbin than Eve so our Eve plane still has enough feel after reaching low Kerbin orbit to on its own get the rest of the way to Eve. I threw in an unnecessary Mooner assist just so we can get at least one gravity assist in this mission. So we've gotten everything we need in low EVE orbit. We've mined some fuel on Gilly and then used the tanker to bring it to low EVE orbit so now the EVE plane is fully fueled and it's ready to land. The first notable thing about that is that this can land on EVE with a full tank of fuel which is usually not the case with an EVE plane unless you deliberately plan for it. Some of the solutions used here are a little bit odd and let's see it land. Usually the difficulty with landing an EVE plane with a full tank of fuel on EVE is that with all that mass you don't have enough lift to slow the descent enough to avoid burning up on entry. That actually wasn't the problem here, we had plenty of lift. The problem was that I needed this to fly really well at low speed at low altitude. Doing that was resulting in making it unstable at a high speed, such that when I came in for entry, the plane would eventually go unstable and want to start flying in reverse. The reason stability is different at different speeds is that the ratio between pressure from the wing and pressure from the body of the craft is not constant at different speeds, which gives it different centers of pressure depending on the speed you're going at. At high speeds, the center of pressure is further forward, which is making it unstable and makes it want to flip around and fly in reverse. Eventually, I realized that this wasn't a problem that needed a solution. It wasn't a problem at all. By allowing it to start flipping around at the right time, it would generate a ton of drag, slow down, and then I would just fly it in reverse. I didn't want to land it in reverse, but fortunately, we eventually slow down enough that I can turn on the ducted fans and just start flying it in the opposite direction. Now, is this the most elegant solution? With apologies to Mr. Kepler, it is certainly not, but it does work. Another nice thing about having this ducted fan drive is that it is powered entirely by RTGs, which gives us an unlimited range on them, which gives us a lot of freedom to have some inaccuracy in the landing approach, which does happen with our sort of controlled flipping around approach. We can then just use the ducted fan drive to get us to wherever we need to go from there. The other nice thing is, well, for one, you wouldn't have to land it at all, but you can land it wherever you want and then fly it around as much as you want, land it however many times you want. We're going to land the passengers next to this gulf of the Explodium Sea and give them a little bit of time to sightsee. We'll have to bring out more of an EVE base here to give them some more to do. But for now, let's see if this can get back to low EVE orbit. If you saw my previous EVE plane video, you'll notice that the ducted fan mode of this flies considerably better than that. I wanted this plane to be useful for ferrying passengers around the surface of EVE as well. And in order to do that, I added a little bit of not totally necessary mass to the ducted fan engines just so that it would fly around better and faster. The ducted fan drive is going to get us to a little bit less than 17 kilometers altitude, at which point we're actually going to descend slightly about half a kilometer, which allows us to get to a higher speed before starting up the rocket engine. Rocket engines having a constant specific impulse, this will make the most efficient use of them. You always want to be going as fast as possible when using rocket engines, so we're going to stay at a low 
of an altitude as possible during the early stage of this ascent. This is where the flaps that I mentioned earlier come in handy. By closing them once we reach around 350 meters per second, I can stay at a low altitude longer and be able to gain more speed before using the fuel and therefore getting more power out of the rocket engines. Eventually though, we do need to start climbing or we're gonna to start to generate tons of drag. So we do start nosing up and once we've started to climb enough, we're gonna reach a thinner part of the atmosphere, at which point I will reopen the flaps to give us a little more wing area to help us get to an orbit. And with all that done, we have nowhere near enough delta V to get into a low EVE orbit. We've gotten into a suborbital trajectory, but we're about a thousand meters per second short of getting to a stable orbit that's gonna prevent us from plummeting back down to the surface. But don't worry, we have planned for this in order to make up the gap of lovingly took inspiration from, borrowed, stolen, whatever you want to call it, an idea from a Strats and Blitz video years ago. I've timed the ascent of the EVE plane to align with the orbit of the high thrust space tug left in low EVE orbit. The timing was a little bit off actually, but within the margins that this still should be possible. The mammoth engine on the space tug will have to be able to very carefully make up for any error in the ascent, slow down, make the rendezvous, and then dock. And then we have a window of seconds to make that docking happen and such that we'll be able to push the whole thing back into a stable orbit. This was actually more similar to a ordinary rendezvous and docking maneuver than I expected it to be. All the steps were still there, they just had to happen outrageously quickly and they all had to happen pretty much automatically without having to consciously think about them. The anomaly resulting in differences in gravity from EVE made a lot more significant difference in the approach, but it still all played out and I felt like the practice of having done a lot of other rendezvous and docking maneuvers did apply quite well here. Which brings the repeatable mission cycle of this system to a close. So we've proven that this can bring 80 Kerbals from low EVE orbit to the surface of EVE, anywhere you want around EVE, and then back to orbit again. So is it practical? Well, kind of. It gets it all done. It does it quickly in terms of mission time, but it's definitely not easy to use. Having to do this suborbital rendezvous increases the difficulty of actually using this kind of thing quite a bit. So if you were actually just trying to make a convenient, easy to use EVE base, you might want to just build something that can do it all in a single stage if you really wanted it to be reusable. However, I do think it is worth going for the extra challenge of the suborbital rendezvous. For one, it's just a lot of fun. Two, this has dramatically improved the performance. Relative to the fully single stage to low EVE orbit cargo plane, we've gone with a smaller design, one that has been designed to fly around low EVE quite a bit better. We have the extra drag of having the externally mounted passenger modules, and we've still nearly doubled the effective payload ratio from 6% to just over 10%. So that brings this mission to a close. I certainly still have not run out of things to do on EVE. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, do your thing if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.